Hi, I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions, and today we're talking about cable trays on a commercial solar project. Basically, cable enclosures fall into ladder, tray, and mesh. And, and what are the differences? So effectively, cable ladder is very heavy duty, so imagine like a ladder leaning up against a wall, and then imagine if that ladder was actually connected to the wall, and then very thick cables, usually on the AC side, are connected to that ladder. So the ladder is a lot heavier duty than tray. Now tray is a lot lighter than ladder in most cases and it's designed for horizontal runs. A classic example is DC cable on a roof. It can be heavy, heavy duty as well, but it tends not to be heavy as ladder. Now cable mesh is designed for supporting cables that are quite light in weight. So we're talking about comms cables, uh, internet cables and that sort of things. And it's primarily used indoors. So cable ladder, cable tray and cable mesh come in standard sizes and I'm talking about the width. So 150mm, 300mm, 450mm and 600mm. And also in different side wall heights. So for instance, if we're using say an AC cable, you'd be using a, a higher sidewall height than say running DC cable. So the sidewall heights come in 45 mils, 50 mils and 85 mils. Now other characteristics we have to look at are, is the load rating of the actual ladder or tray we're talking about. So in other words, how much cable can I put in these trays? How far can I span the actual cable tray before I need another support? So really important, we do not want too much deflection in the tray and there's particular um, data sheets that will tell you that this particular tray has this amount of deflection using this cable that weighs X amount per metre. So cable tray for DC runs. Now here's some of the questions you should ask. How many cables am I putting in the tray? Is the cable tray going under something else? And of course, heat transfer. You're putting these cables in a tray, they're producing heat. Then you put another cable next to that existing cable, and then another one, another one, another one. This all plays a role, not only how far away they are, but how many they are. So how many DC cables could you put into cable tray? This is really up to the designer. Uh, I'd be looking at maybe putting 14 strings max into 150 mil, um, so that's 14 strings, pos and neg, and also the main earth vein that goes down the cable tray um, that effectively is the earth from the, the rail that goes into the tray and continues on down to the main earth point. And in regards to the side wall height, I'd be looking at the 45 mil side wall height, which allows you 38 mil of cable distance. So that's what you've got to play with. But again, it's up to you as a designer. Look, the other thing is too, is that as the further away you are from that switchboard, in other words, the further away your array is, let's say it's one big roof, you're starting off with one or two strings and you're coming in, and I'm assuming we're not paralleling the strings, so you're coming into the tray. So the tray doesn't have to be that wide, but right at the end, if there's a single run, you're gathering up all these extra cables and suddenly you're going from 150 mil to 300 mil the 450 to 600. So the question you have to ask yourself as a designer is do I just use one standard size? That might be too expensive. Do I transition from 150 all the way up to 600 mil? That takes time to make it look neat. Do I use a standard tray all the way through to account for worst case scenario? Maybe you can get away with 450. So a lot of questions you have to ask and obviously it depends on the configuration of your strings and how you're coming into the actual tray. Now cable tray for AC runs. So AC cable is considerably heavier um, than DC, especially when you start going up into, into the larger um, sizes of XLPE. You're talking about a lot of weight, it's really horrible stuff to handle. So you're going to be using ladder in, in most cases, both in the vertical and horizontal runs. Also remember, because the cable is so heavy and you may be running up a wall or coming down a wall, think of the derating of the cable. Are you going to be using existing cable tray? 
Are you going to be putting multiple, again, multiple cables in that cable tray, which you are, but just think of that spacing between the actual cables themselves. Think about whether you need to use lid in that particular situation or not. It just depends. Obviously, check your standards. And also, that in the installation process, you may need machinery. You may need a scissor lift or something similar to get up and position and install on that wall. You do not want to be dealing with some of the larger um, diameter cables off a ladder. That, that, that's an absolute no-no from many perspectives. Now, cable tray does have to be earth. You have to look at the standard AS3000, the most recent one, and look at um, clause 5.6.3. And effectively, they are talking about uh, conductive piping. Um, and if you read carefully, it is a shell. There's a requirement for you to earth the cable. <laughs> look, I've had this conversation with a few people. Some people say you don't have to. It's a, the way we see it is that effectively you, you have to earth the tray. In conclusion, there are large differences between cable ladder, cable tray and cable mesh. Look at the load ratings required and select your tray accordingly. When installing DC and AC cabling, be very aware that there is derating that is required when you start putting cables together and derate that cable accordingly. Thanks very much for watching this particular video on cable tray. I'm Veli from Greenwood Solutions. Please feel free to comment, ask questions, provide answers maybe, and subscribe if you can. That'd be great. Thank you.